Here at the Armage Ranch, I've got uh, more projects than time. And these projects seem to just find me, although I'm particularly excited about this one. Check this out. If I can get this thing running, it will be the perfect trail buddy chainsaw. I just imagine this on my ATV or in my truck. It's so small, there's little steel. And I was given to this for free, so hopefully it's not in too horrible a shape and we can get it running. To start, it is not seized. I don't know if I'd even try and tackle it if it was seized. Another good sign is that I'm always leery of metal gas tanks, but if you can get any light in there, no rust, which is a definite bonus. If there was rust in there, that'd make it a lot harder. You can just see this little carburetor getting clogged every two seconds. Uh, it is leaking oil like a sieve, and I'm hoping that is the chain oil. Um, I know that this is all pre-mixed, so it doesn't have like an oil reservoir for the engine. I'm assuming a little two-stroke guy. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop off the pop off the spark plug and see if it has any spark. Hopefully the uh, kid can stay asleep for the majority of this. He should be pretty dang tired. Punk size. Spark plug does not look that bad at all. So, let's see if we can get her to spark up a little bit. Well, if you're getting that, it's definitely sparking though. Check one, spark. Well, I'm assuming the carburetor is right in there. I'm not seeing like a primer. So I'm assuming this we have start, choke on, L and H. Looks like you can get like a, a screwdriver in there, L, A. I don't know what these markings are, but let's just, <laughs> I don't know, let's even fire up. No luck as of yet, so I'm going to put a little bit of ether right into the spark plug hole. I can smell that ether burning and now it's not firing off anymore so I'm pretty sure we're not getting fuel and so I'm going to have to take apart the carburetor and clean it out. Um, I was hoping I didn't have to but what do you expect honestly that's probably <laughs> something like this has been sitting with uh, ethanol gas in it. Chances are you're going to have to clean the carburetor out. Lucky me. Oh man. Look how much gunk is getting past this little air filter. That's not what you want to see. <laughs> That'll wear your rings out really fast. After more fiddling around on the internet, find a couple videos and a uh, dissection manual. I found that I don't actually have to split this gas tank, which is nice. It's just a bunch of little bolts that have to come undone. Um, all this stuff, top panels come off. 
these two bolts have to come off and then a bunch of little screws so I'm just gonna get at it. One tip that I like to do if I can get away with it, if I ever pull out a screw like this, hold me on this handle, I like to just put it back from whence it came. That way I know exactly where that screw is. I don't have to leave it around lying to get lost somewhere. I'm trying to get these bolts out. They are uh, not loose. And I guess I need a bigger screwdriver because that one is now bent. Lovely. Now that I think I've removed all of the bolts that need to be taken out, this should split in half here. There we go. So you got the outer case and the gas tank. And I'm trying to figure out here how gas is getting from this tank into it. But I see it now. There's a little nipple that fits right into that o ring to get gas into here. So this is the culprit right here. Here's our tiny little oh so small. <laughs> That has got to be one of the smallest carburetors I've ever seen, and it is very dirty. Oh my gosh, look how much just gunk is around that thing. Because this top is actually open. Open right here for these two bolts, which I'm assuming are the like idle screw and air mixture. But that is what I need to take apart and clean out the jets. So this is really, really just gunky and messy. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to plug up this hole with a rag. I'm going to take carb cleaner and spray all this off just to get some of these bigger chunks of, of nasty out of here. So before I hacked into the carburetor, I actually went into the gas tank itself and made sure that out of that little rubber grommet here, gas was getting out. Because if you were pouring gas into this tank and no gas was coming out of there, you knew that your gas blockage was in the tank rather than in your carburetor. And there is a small um, gas line that could very easily get clogged up in here. So that's number one to check now. To take apart this. Ooh, this is that is hard. <laughs> hard as a rock. So I gotta be really careful in uh in removing that guy to make sure I don't break it because I feel like that's just cracking. It would probably be smart to replace that. Um I'm hopefully can get away without doing so. Sweet, sweet success. It uh, took more than more time than I'd like to admit, but that throttle linkage that was running between the trigger mechanism and the throttle on the carburetor was an absolute nightmare. This is supposed to just be able to slide off, but that throttle linkage bar, this guy right here. Um, after a, probably about 10 minutes of filling around, I finally got it off, and this is the culprit. So you can see where... I need to start taking this apart, and before I do any of that, you can see there's still just gunk on here, old sawdust. Uh, all that needs to be completely taken out before you start getting into it, because if any of that gets back into a, the carburetor, uh, you're going to clog up those jets, um, and you'll have to do this whole process again. So I'm going to get this really, really clean before I start taking it apart, and I'm just going to do that with some brake cleaner. So when you're working with the carburetor, it's important to keep your workstation clean because any of the contaminants from your bench get back into them there and you've got that same problem. So I've got this guy all WD-40 up and I'm going to start taking apart and I'm looking for jets. So those are going to be your culprit, 9 times out of 10. So here's your bowl and if you look in there there's some gritty nastiness. It feels almost like sand. So I'll get all that cleaned out. 
to cut this top piece off, it just needed a little bit of extra force. And you can see there's a wire mesh filter right there. That's just got some gunk in it, it'll be need cleaned. And then those two orifices right there are what really need to be pushed out. And so I'm just gonna take some WD-40, get in all that. And then also, I do need to get underneath this gasket and clean everything out in there too. There'll be a needle valve that, that really needs to be cleaned out. This is pretty crusty, so you definitely gotta be careful. Uh, I'd rather not buy a rebuilding kit if you can't help it. Oh, I think that's it. There we go. And actually, it looks nice and clean in here. Um, the jets, actually these are the jets after a little bit more research. Um, so I cleaned out those. And there is a needle valve right in there that needs to come out. Say surprisingly tight. Um, there's Loctite on that screw, and this just is a retaining pin for this valve right here. Yeah, actually, really clean in here. This is nice to see. So there's that needle valve right there. Just gonna clean that up. Like I said, not too dirty. I uh, picked WD-40 and I sprayed, let's see where you at. I sprayed into that hole and it was exiting out through this one. So I know that it's clear. You put it back in, make sure that this works and that that needle is free. Otherwise you'll have to do it all over again. This carb is a hell of a lot cleaner now. Time to put it all back together and fingers crossed you fires. All right, got it all put together. Carb is hopefully cleaned. Put a little star fluid in here. Not too much. Let's see what happens. It is not tuned, <laughs> but man, that is awesome. Definitely needs to have some carb tunage. But I'd say it's getting fuel now. Excellent. Thank <laughs> you.